Lung function, as defined by the FEV1, declines during aging. So first, what is the FEV1? So the FEV1 is how much air can be forcefully expired in one second. Now on to the data. On the y-axis, we've got the FEV1 in liters of air per second, plotted against age in people that were younger than 20 up through older than 80. And what we can see when looking at data for healthy non-smokers for median values is that there is a peak for the FEV1 around 20 years old, and then there's a precipitous decline during aging. Now that's potentially important because the FEV1 is a top predictor of chronological age. And this is in data for a preprint, so it, it has not yet been peer reviewed, that was published last year in 2022. So when looking at the data for men and in women, and when looking at the, each of these biomarkers contribution to chronological age, CA prediction, we can see that the FEV1 is third in men and second in women for their contribution to the prediction of chronolo uh, chronological age in this study. Now also, before moving on, note that the top predictor in this study was systolic blood pressure, and I'll have more on that later in this video and in tomorrow's video. So when considering that lung function declines during aging and that the FEV1 is a top predictor of chronological age, can the age-related decline for FEV1 be slowed and or prevented? So to test that hypothesis in September of 2022, I started using a lung training device with the goal of optimizing my FEV1. So first, which lung training device was used? And I went with the Breather Fit. I'm not sponsored by them. I don't have an affiliate link. That's just what I used. So then how and when did I use it? So for the Breather Fit, it this was a seven week study. I also used it before and I also used it after, but I'll get more, more into that in a second. So the primary study was from October 17th through December 8th. Again, it was a seven week study where I used it six days per week. And I started with five minutes per day of continuous breathing. And then I worked up to eight minutes per day by week seven. And note that this isn't just breathing into a, vice, a device with no resistance. I use the highest resistance settings for both inspiration and expiration. And in terms of testing, I tested then my FEV1 three times per week. And then on each of those days, I tested it nine times and I recorded the best attempt of those nine attempts for that day. In terms of testing, I used this exact spirometer. And the reason I picked this spirometer, again, not sponsored by them, don't have an affiliate link, is that this spirometer can be used at home. Uh, in this paper that well, I've referenced here, uh, Gel Gelbin and Reed, which will be in the video's description, along with all of the other paper, papers referenced in this video. This spirometer had a 0.96, which is almost perfectly linear, when compared with spirometry that was performed in the physician's office. So it may be a pretty good spirometer for measuring the FEV1. So with that in mind, were FEV1 and or blood pressure, and we'll see why I've included blood pressure here in a second, were they improved as a result of the lung training? So we're about to take a look at FEV1 data from September of 2022 through February of 2023. So before using this lung training device, the Breather Fit from September 20th through October 16th of 2022, over 12 days of data, my average FEV1 was 3.25 liters. And then when using the Breather Fit for that seven week study duration, over 21 tests, my average was 2.98 liters. Now, besides just looking at uh, two groups of data, when comparing them with a two sample t-test, we can see that this is actually a significant worsening, not an improvement. When using the lung training device, my FEV1 got significantly worse. Now, if this is a real effect, when I remove the, breath the lung training device, uh, the breather fit for the same seven week period, if it has a real effect on reducing my FEV1, I'd expect it to go back up after not using it for the same seven, seven week period over 21 measurements. So for the post-breather fit data from December 9th through February 2nd of 2023, we can see that's exactly what happened. My FEV1 average over those 21 tests went up to 3.09, and that was a significant increase when using a two-sample t-test. So from these data, it looks like I was overtraining when using this lung trainer, and that may have resulted in a worse FEV1. Now, I should mention that the published studies that have looked at lung training devices used six days per week and at least five minutes per day. So in my case, that seems to be, for whatever reason, overtraining, at least in terms of the FEV1. So if I'm going to go back to using the breathing device, the lung training device in the future, I'm probably going to cut the uh, six days down to three days and again, work up to eight minutes per day using the uh, highest resistance settings for inspiration and expiration to make sure I'm getting a training stimulus for my inspiratory and expiratory muscles. 
Now you can see in this question, I asked were FEV1 and or blood pressure uh, improved as a result of the lung trainer? And we know that obviously the FEV was, wasn't, but why would I expect that blood pressure would improve? Well, inspiratory muscle training has been shown to reduce blood pressure. So for people that use lung training devices, uh, and here we're looking at systolic blood pressure on the y-axis, and regardless of the age group that was studied, so in terms of studies in young adults, middle-aged, older, older adults, and middle-aged and older adults that had obstructive sleep apnea, we can see that systolic blood pressure was improved, significantly improved in each of these studies. Regardless if the systolic blood pressure was relatively higher, so around 135 in middle-aged and older adults, or even relatively lower in younger adults, around somewhere around 110, there were significant improvements in systolic blood pressure as a result of using the lung training devices. So with that in mind, was blood pressure improved as a result of lung training? And the, I'll pre present that in tomorrow's video. So if you're interested in that, uh, come back to the channel and check it out. All right, that's all for now. If you're interested in more about my attempts to biohack aging, check us out on Patreon. And before you go, we've got a whole bunch of discount links and merch that you may be interested in, in terms of NAD quantification, green tea, epigenetic testing, oral microbiome composition, uh, discount links for at-home blood testing, diet tracking, or if you'd like to support the channel, you can do that with the website, Buy Me A Coffee. We've also got merch, so if you're interested in wearing the Conquer Aging or Diet Trying brand, uh, that link and all the other discount links and the papers referenced in the video will be in the video's description. Thanks for watching. I hope that you enjoyed the video. Have a great day.